Hello guys, welcome back to a brand new video and welcome back to another football video as well. Today I'm going to cover my own club. What needs to happen in the summer? What do I think needs to happen in the summer? But anyway guys, let's get straight out to this video. Let's turn this green screen on and let's get going. So guys, you know what to do. So a big up thumbs up you enjoy it. Subscribe for more. Thanks for watching and let's go. Right, we have just lost to Sheffield United away. Now, no matter which way you're going to look at this result, it was a terrible performance by the Albion. You could have replayed our home leg in that game, and the only difference would have been we score. Now, my opinion, this is a free putter who my grand put away, and she's been gone nearly, I think, 20 odd years. I could have put her away. Um, it was just a terrible performance all the way through. So this is what I reckon needs to happen throughout the summer. Um, but I'm, I'm going to mention Sheffield United and I'm also going to mention some other worst results that Brighton should have never had this season. I'm going to draw into the likes of West Brom. Failing to pick a win up against the promotion side. Failing to win against the relegation side who, who is Sheffield United. It's all going to be brought up in this video, but as I said, I'll do it throughout the video. So, first thing, Grand Potter. I'm a potter in and potter out. Now, for you that know, you know, you know what I think. He has got to go. I know a lot of you Brighton fans won't be happy with this, but hear it from my perspective. We were one nil up against West Brom at home this season. 10 minutes to go, we played the possession game. Um, and on that basis of playing that uh, possession game, we gave the goal away and we only got a point. Now, yet again, Sheffield United this weekend just gone. We literally played the possession game. Not even on the last 10 minutes, chances to get into the box, and we just knock it around the outside of the box and eventually losing the ball, which means, you know, give the, the uh, possession back back to Sheffield United. But then it also means we have to start again. Poor, poor performance by the boys. And yes, is where I blame it on Grand Potter. I know it's not all Grand Potter's fault. Um, you know, I do give him, I wouldn't say credit, but I will give the players on the stick as well. And, you know, due course, but I want to get Graham out of the way first. So, basically, 10 minutes to go. Um, the only real chance we had of scoring was the Eski Edo strike, who was great to see back, by the way. But on the perspective of that, Way scored in the 20th minute of play, somewhere around there. Um, Mo Dem scored an offside goal, still a debate about that, but. You know, that's a video if you want to see it, put it down in the comments below. But then you have got to start thinking of what can we do to score, basically. As I said, uh, my pain misses a... F I still don't know how he missed it. Well, he came across the box, all he needed was to just tap it, and he oofs it over the bar. That is Mo pay all over. Um, which for me is another player that needs to be sat. If you're not not sat, sorry, sold. You can't sack a player for Potter Club too much. But he needs to be sold. How many players have Brighton missed out on in this last how many four windows? I think it's four. Br uh, Brighton had under Grand Potter. Ollie Watkins, who's now the Aston Villa, you know, striker. Balarama, who's now a West Ham striker. Two great players there who let's not you know be too racy came from the same club that Neil Mope did I still would have brought one maybe two strikers in we're looking short in the strikers position we've got Percy Taub Pope up and down and that right um, but you have got to start looking at what can Brighton do to fix this problem we might still not be in the Premier League come the end of the season. Seven points, I think the gap is between us and Fulham. Um, and I still reckon Fulham will escape. I don't know what gives me that feeling. They've just been so unlucky this season. Same with Brighton. I ain't just supposed to put the ball in the net, but you can see their termination. 
Flash is gonna wanna score. Brighton, one goal down, that's it. I even thought to myself at the end of, well not even at the end of the game. As soon as Sheffield United scored, I went that's it. In my head I went, that's it, game over. We're done. There's no way we're gonna score. Time passes on. Plan the possession game, hardly getting a shot off, playing really poor football. Um, and then the second half starts. And um, going into the second half, I actually did go out to watch this game, by the way. Uh, I didn't watch it, but come from my home, uh, my own home. But, you know, I do. Second half came into play, and I thought, brilliant. You know, maybe a slight chance of, you know, maybe a goal. Time passes on, no real big improvement from uh, the boys nor Grand Potter. Our first two subs, um, and our only two subs, Groves off and mowed them off. Now to me, mowed them is a player that should have stayed on. Um, we've got the likes of Ischiello on the bench, who's been on the bench been four or five times before getting a game appearance. And back from injury, I can understand the grand pot of thinking behind that. But he's one of our best wingers on that bench. Um, and that frustrated me to the core. And yet we've got him on 10 minutes to go. What we expected him to do is he had a great strike. And as I said, the only real chance for scoring in that second half. So frustrating. Um, now I can see a lot of you commenting, what would I do um, in, you know, take your potter out. Um, take him nil mo pay out and you know I might even do a stale go for the O if you want me to put it down in the comments below as well but you have got to start thinking we are doing something wrong to me it's just Chris Hewton really I remember Chris Hewton a couple of seasons ago turn off at Fulham away we played the possession game kick it around at the back and we lost 4-2 that gives me the thing that really is just for shooting um, yet again. If I was to bring a manager in, I would probably bring in someone like Rafael Benitez. I know um, a lot of you won't be happy with that, and as I said, I know at the start of this video you wouldn't be happy with the whole video anyway, but I bring Rafael Benitez in, or Jason Mourinho. Uh, Tony Bloom, sorry, keeps mentioning, oh yeah, we want to be a top 10 side in the future. We are nowhere near the top 10 this season. Last season, OK, it's a bit of a, bit of a different story. I remember last season, I remember going to the Brighton Valencia friendly and thinking to myself, OK, maybe Grandpa's got a chance. But he's so nice, he's a nice bloke, but being a football manager is not always about being nice. Once again, Jason Mourinho springs to my mind because of the fact, you know, you got, he dropped Daddy Alley from the Tottenham squad. Not a lot of Tottenham fans were happy with that. Um, that's what we need at Brighton. We need that someone tough guy who goes, you're not good enough, you're dropped. Um, Neil Mopay for me, he's had his chances. If you can't pull it away from three yards, what do we expect of him? Um, Percy Tower, as I said, I'd rather see him have a proper go. Um, the only time I've really seen him in strike was his first two games, and I believe one of them were Manchester City away. Not a game for him. Um, but yeah, a lot of frustrating at Brighton. Um, be prepared for this Brighton uh, transfer thing to come through in this summer transfer window. Be prepared for England videos as well, where I'll put my 26 up against uh, Gal Southgate's 26 and you guys get a chance to vote. But anyway guys, I've got to bring this video to an end, so guys, you know what to do. Subscribe for more videos, be fun that you enjoy it. Thanks for watching, ciao for now.